please bow our head and put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dear God, we offer everything to you during this seminar. May we ask for your blessing and divine providence that the activities set for this undertaking be successful and effective. May we also retain the invaluable knowledge and learning experiences that we derive from this activity. We pray that you bless all the committee in charge that they fulfill tasks responsibly that the objectives they have set may all be achieved. Your generous as blessing would meet success of this seminar. We know that without it we can do nothing. Maybe believing with the success of your genuine love through the implementation of the knowledge acquired through this activity. Grant us your divine wisdom as we about our daily tasks after this seminar. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, sound check. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the free webinar on basic principles of transfer pricing. Today is June 18, 2021. No? Our seminar will, will last for two hours, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. No? So thank you very much for your uh, attendance to this seminar. So we have our free webinar. Ito may check, Harry. Ito na yung... Nagano. Okay, sige. So for the information also of everyone, I would like to call up yung present na ngayon. Ano? There are how many registrants? One, two, three, four, five. So there are 115 registrants. No? And uh, I would like to call on <laughs> Ma'am Sonia Angeles, number one po kayo. No? Uh, from Diliman, Quezon City. She, she is a uh, BR accredited tax agency is a CPA, no? Um, Baco Stephanie Joy Maranan from San Mateo Rizal also a CPA, no? Karamihan pala ng ano natin ngayon is CPA and tax agent, no? Also, uh, we have Balmenia Maria Teresa Mendoza accounting assistant, no? From Bataan uh, peninsula, pero uh, dito siya sa uh, Ortigas Center sa Pasig, no? And we have Bito Onjen Precious, no? From HGV and Company, she's also a CPA. We have uh, Bugarin Maika May from uh, Olonga po, also an accountant. Kawa Kakayan Christian Bryan from San Carlos City, Pangasinan, no? Uh, Castaneda Carlo 
uh, accountant also from PUP. Seridon Marilyn, no? uh, tax agent, na masipag businesswoman. No? Uh, we have Fermi Maribel from Tagig, no? intermediate accountant po siya. From AS White, no? naka-offer tayo dyan ng transfer pricing analysis. And then we have Formoso Alessandro Ray, always ito na ano natin, uh, part participant palagi natin to sa mga live streaming natin. No? We have Francia Ray Lewis, also an accountant from UST. We have uh, Gamweda Pamela Ann from University of Pangasinan. We have Lamayo Maria Sende. We have Layao Lionel Catalig. Uh, Libon Mary Joy. Lonon Bernadette, always. No? Si Ma'am Bernadette, palagi din post natin siya na kasama sa live streaming. Lopez Chini from Baco or Cavite, accountant. Loyola Marina, accounting manager. Lucero Karen K, accountant. Magnayi Merdrel Castillo, freelance virtual assistant. No? Ito yung mga in-demand na trabaho ngayon. No? Marciano Jessica, uh, finance supervisor from Calamba, Laguna. We have Mercado Freddy Bird. from Global Business Power. Ochavi Kathleen Grace, Administrative Aid 4. No? Putol yung ano niya, from Baguio City, pero putol yung mga information niya. Yes, Department of, nakalagay lang, tapos Administrative Aid 4, University of, ganun. Putol. Um, we have Pilayo, Jan Andre. From BPI Compliance Officer, yes, kailangan nyo po talaga transfer pricing. No? Paris Michael, Paris Monica, fra, uh, account, accountant po sila from uh, Tagig no? and Makati. Ponchoso Esterlina, uh, from Cagayan de Oro, no? teaching po siya. Presco Alexis Sara, accounting staff, no? Mm. Baliti, City of San Ho San ano to? CSFP eh. Ano, ano yan? Uh, and then we have Ponsalan Jidija Prisa Arboleda from Valenzuela City. Rada Maria Floresa. Okay. From Albay. We have Salvamante Genebeth from Palok, Manila. Uh, Santiago Jacqueline from Dagupan City, Pangasinan. We have Sigia, Sigia Munet from Caloocan, no? from Rembrandt Hotel siya, uh, AR officer. We have Makapagaldona, ito yung mga sinulat mo, Harry, present na sila. Makapagaldona, Salom, uh, Esperanza, Tony, Rosalina, Bustamante, RG, and Bundalian, Verna. Vernaan, no? So, meron pa? Sinulat mo? Okay. So, ito po yung mga bago. We have Bernabe, Rose Ann, Koino, Adelpha, we have Soriano, Jeff, Vergara, Joan, Abad, Annabel, Galiema, Ra uh, Rizal, Doroy, Mer Mary Jane, Sastri, Jamaica, Sambo, Aldeno, Calfo, Foro, Catherine, Bonlang, Jonalyn, no? So, yung iba siguro, uh, mamaya na po natin tawagan during the break. Since uh, for uh, two hours lang po tayo, so, i-concise na po natin ito. And then we have full questions pa, so it will take time. Uh, Mag-overspill man po tayo ng two hours siguro, konting-konti uh, lang, no? Just to manage our time. So, we'll start with uh, uh, free webinar on basic principles of transfer pricing. And uh, it is uh, very important and uh, siguro timely na binigay po natin sa inyo ito. This is a free webinar, webinar for two hours. And uh, you just augment the knowledge na matutunan nyo dito. I-expand nyo na lang by self-study. No? Kasi the knowledge that you will get today is not enough. No? Talagang walang katapusan yan. But uh, you have a good start. No? So, our topics... 
uh, very important is the arm's length principle because this is the basis of transfer pricing. And we have the five OECD transfer pricing methods. Uh, we did discuss natin isa isa po sa inyo. And then we have the comparability factors. No, Very important yung comparability factors kasi in uh, transfer pricing, you are going to compare no, two or more things. And we have another transfer pricing documentation. Para kasi sa akin, in order to learn basic transfer pricing, itong apat na to are very important. No? So we'll start with the arm's length principle. Ano po ba itong arm's length principle that is being followed by uh, transfer pricing? No? So the arm's length principle is the international standard that OECD member countries have agreed used for determining transfer prices for tax purposes. No? So, uh, the arm's length principle, hindi ito yung basta nangyari na lang. No? Uh, this principle undergone studies by the OECD and then accepted by uh, many member countries and also being observed by non-member countries. No? Uh, ito yung embodied and the very powerful statement for the arm's length principle is found in Article 9 of the OECD Model Tax Convention. Ano yung sinasabi uh, ng uh, OECD Model Tax Convention? Abot mo nga sa akin, Harry. Kasi pakita ko sa kanila yung mga sources po natin na ng uh, the arms and principle po. Ano yung mga sources? So, una muna yung OECD. Yung maliit na yun. Yung ilalim. No? So, ito po ha. So, for your information, this is the um, model tax convention on income and on capital. No? So, ito po yung uh, OECD model tax convention on income and capital. And nandito po sa article 9 na to yung uh, very powerful statement on the arms and principle which, which I will discuss to you. No? So, pagka nag-aaral po kayo ng uh, transfer pricing, it is very important na meron kayo mga source document. And ang pinaka-importante pong source document ninyo is this, no? And how much does this cost? This cost us 40,000, no? This is in order po namin to from uh, Paris, France. Pero pwede po kayo mag-download nito free sa internet, no? Okay. And we have another uh, source is the... Uh, OECD Transfer Pricing Guidelines for Multinational Enterprises and Tax Administrations. For your information, pwede din pong i-download ito sa uh, internet. No? Meron available siya na soft copy in PDF form. And then we have also the, the uh, United Nations Practical Manual on Transfer Pricing for Developing Countries. Pareho din po sila 27 in uh, 2017 the uh, guidelines. No? This is the United Nations Practical Manual on Transfer Pricing. And uh, for the transfer pricing law, we have Section 482 of the Internal Revenue Code of the United States. Bakit po natin ito ino observe Because if you try to look at the Section 482, which is the transfer pricing law in the United States, same na same din lang po siya Dito po sa section 50, you can just imagine yung ating tax code, ganito kaliit. Samantalang yung US, 14 uh, volumes, ganun pa kalalaki. No? Yung atin, ito lang, uh, 200 plus uh, section lang. No? Section 50 ng tax code natin, National Internal Revenue Code, nandito po yung transfer pricing law natin, which is also the same as the Section 482 of the National Internal Revenue Code of the U.S. No, So, yun po yung mga basis natin in transfer pricing. Okay. So, ano sabi po sa Article 9 of the OECD Model Tax Convention? Where conditions are made, or imposed between the two enterprises in their commercial or financial relations which differ from those which would be made between independent enterprises. Oh, ito, dalawa yung sinasabi niya dito. Ha? Yung two enterprises daw, 
meron silang financial and commercial relations, but different from the independent enterprises. Iba yung ginawa nila na uh, relations. Iba yung ginawa nila sa transactions nila. Hindi kagaya ng independent enterprises. Then any profits with would, but for those conditions have accrued to one of the enterprises, but by reason of those conditions have not so accrued, may be included in the profits of that enterprise and tax accordingly. Ano pong ibig sabihin? Merong profits, no? Itong dalawang enterprises, meron silang financial and commercial relations. Pero iba siya doon sa independent enterprises. So, any profits na hindi na-include dito sa uh, isang enterprise may be included in the other enterprise and taxed accordingly. Kasi minsan, profit ito nung isang enterprise nilagay nila dito sa isang enterprise. Bakit? Kasi the purpose is for tax reason. Dahil yung isang enterprise mataas ang tax rate, doon nila sinama sa enterprise na maliit ang tax rate so that makatipid sila in the payment of taxes. And for your information, ang transfer pricing, ang kinakarb talaga ng transfer pricing is the uh, artificial price management to save taxes. No? Kasi ito yung ginagamit na tool of many countries in order that they can collect the proper taxes. No? Mayroon tayong full question mamaya. No? After na i-discuss natin yung principles ng uh, transfer pricing, may, may sasagutin po kayo na poll questions. And then, uh, anong gagawin nila, Hari? Yung answer nila? May isi-send akong... po akong link, tapos <coughs> i-click nyo po, doon, doon na lang po kayo sasagot nung sa... Regarding sa poll question. Okay, okay. sige. Tapusin ko muna no, yung uh, basis ng arms length principle before I will give you the poll question. No? So, transactions between independent prices are ordinarily determined by market forces. Why? Why arms length principle? Because sabi ng arms length principle, the true transaction is that between independent enterprises. Why? Because the in independent uh, prices are influenced by the market. They are not influenced by the party over the other, which is control over the other party. When transfer pricing does not reflect market forces and the arms and principle, the tax liabilities of the associated enterprises and the tax revenues of the host countries could be distorted. So yun po yung purpose talaga. Kaya nga, if you trust try to study transfer pricing, always bear in mind that transfer pricing is for related parties because if there are no related parties, then there is no transfer pricing. No? Kasi sa transfer pricing, we have to compare the related party transactions with that of the independent transaction. So if there is no related party, then you have nothing to compare. Kasi anong sabi nila? Tax revenues of the host countries could be distorted. Why? Kasi binayad na nila doon sa ibang countries. Okay. So, factors other than tax consideration may distort the conditions of commercial and financial relations between associated parties, associated enterprises. I understand, Harry, lahat sila meron ng kopya of the PowerPoint. No? So, that yung mga uh, discussions po natin, meron na kayong idea because after this, meron kayong kopya on the PowerPoint slides, no? You can expand. Based on that, you can expand your, uh, if you want to expand, know more about transfer pricing, then you can use this as your starting point. No? Factors other than tax considerations may distort the conditions of commercial and financial relations between associated parties. But, of course, not only tax uh, reason, yung uh, motivation why uh, ginagawa nila na different yung kanilang transactions. No? Hindi, hindi lang naman daw uh, tax considerations, but there are reasons. That's why if you try to look at our uh, basic transfer pricing po na YouTube channel, puro cases po yung uh, dinidiscuss natin yan. Why cases? Because you will not appreciate the transfer pricing law without application and tax cases are applications and you will um, appreciate how these transfer pricing laws are applied when it comes to uh, resolution of these transfer pricing cases and how 
also these companies uh, deal with their transactions and then uh, nakaroon ng transfer pricing issues. Uh. So OECD member countries consider that an appropriate adjustment is achieved by establishing the conditions of the commercial and financial relations that they would expect to find between independent enterprises in comparable transactions under comparable circumstances. No? So, ano in can compare? Comparable transactions, but it must be under comparable circumstances. Why? Because you, when you compare, dapat yung kino compare mo the uh, independent transactions and the related party transactions. If you try to look at the Ramo 1 2019, which is the transfer pricing guidelines. Po dito sa Pilipinas. We still have uh, free seminars no? Yung, uh, about transfer pricing and we will be dealing a little about uh, Ramo 1 2019. Why? Kasi sinasabi dito, uh, uh, find independent enterprises in comparable transactions. In that Ramo 1 2019, there are guidelines on how to eliminate uh, companies which are not comparable. No? Hindi sila, ibig sabihin, hindi sila comparable. Uh, hindi sila pwede i-compare. Okay. Uh, we will not entertain questions during the two hours, but if you have some clarification or questions sa topics natin, then you can uh, write down on the comment portion of our YouTube channel and we will answer it after 4 o'clock. No? Those who wanted to stay, hanggat anong oras gusto ninyo, uh, you can stay, and then we will answer your questions. But for those na wala namang concern, then pwede na po kayong hindi mag-join. But our lecture is uninterrupted up to 4 o'clock. No? Kasi uh, we, we, we concise the four topics. Okay. So, paragraph 1, article 9 of the model OECD conventions, where conditions are made or imposed between the two associated enterprises in their commercial or financial relations, memorize po natin to, ah, uh, because we want to study transfer pricing, then this is the very powerful statement on transfer pricing. No? In their commercial or financial relations, which differ from those which would be made between independent enterprises, then any profits which would but for those conditions have accrued to one of those enterprises, but by reason of those conditions have not so accrued, may be included in the profits of those enterprises and taxed accordingly. So, yun po yung sinasabi ng Article 9 of the Model OECD Convention. Another uh, transfer pricing law that we observe in the Philippines is Section 50 of the National Internal Revenue Code, of 1997 as amended. Yun pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. No? So, ano naman yung nakalagay sa Section 50, which is the transfer pricing law in the Philippines? Allocation of income and deductions in the case of two or more organizations, trade or businesses, whether or not incorporated and whether or not organized in the Philippines, owned or controlled. So, this is uh, very important. Ha? Owned or controlled directly or indirectly by same interest. No? So, sila yung may ari. The commissioner is authorized to distribute. Tatlo yung pwedeng gawin dito ng commissioner. Distribute, apportion, or allocate. No? So, so, ano gagawin niya? Distribute, apportion, or allocate the income and deductions. No? Gross income or deductions between or among such organizations, trade or business, if he determines that such distribution, apportionment, or allocation is necessary in order to prevent evasion of taxes or clearly to reflect the income of any such organization's trade or businesses. No? And I mean, the, the um, request sa atin for uh, computation. No? Since we, we have a very limited time, uh, siguro yung mga computations that uh, na gusto ninyo, actually nandiyan yan sa mga cases. No? Kasi sa mga cases, yung computation kasi na the correct transfer price, nandiyan yan sa mga cases, makikita ninyo. And also, there are so many examples in the uh, 2017 transfer pricing guidelines. No? You can find there. Para mas madali siya intindihin. Okay? So, 
Sabi ko nga sa inyo, the transfer pricing law in the Philippines is Section 50 of the National Internal Revenue Code, which is the same also with the Section 482 ng IRC or the Internal Revenue Code of the United States. So ano naman pong sabi ng uh, Section 482? Batas ito na ha? Yung iba nagre-reklamo, bakit daw binabasa ko? I don't want to be misquoted. No? Pag sinabi kasi na batas, hindi tayo pwedeng hindi natin uh, sundin yan word for word. No? Hindi natin pwedeng interpret at saka sabihin natin kung ano-ano. It will uh, give different meaning. No? So word for word po ako pagka batas. No? Ano sabi ng batas? In any case of two or more organizations, no? tingnan ninyo yung section 50 kung hawig siya dito. In any case of two or more organizations, trades or businesses, whether or not incorporated, whether or not organized in the United States, and whether or not affiliated, no? owned or controlled directly or indirectly by the same interests, the secretary, sa atin commissioner, no? the secretary may distribute a portion or allocate. So, tatlo din yung pwede niyang gawin. No? I-distribute niya yung income or deductions, a portion or allocate between the organizations. No? So, direct a portion or allocate gross income, deductions, credits, or allowances between or among such organizations, trades, or businesses. If he determines that such distribution, apportionment, or allocation is necessary, in order to prevent evasion of taxes or clearly to reflect the income of any such organizations, trades, or businesses. In the case of any transfer or license, ito yung nadagdag sa Internal Revenue Code ng U.S., meron na silang dinagdag or dinugtong about intangibles. Sa atin, sa Section 50 natin, wala. No? Wala sila sinasabi about intangibles. But, alam nyo, uh, I went to Shanghai, China, no last 2016, Ang aim ko talaga is to develop uh, uh, yung book about intangibles, no? And um, siguro ngayon ma makakaya na natin, no? Kasi parang tapos na tayo sa law, tapos na tayo sa uh, yung ibang mga activities natin, no? Siguro pwede na natin tutukan yung book natin about intangibles. Why? Because it's very important, no? And there are so many transfer pricing issues that crop up because of intangibles. So, dapat talagang uh, i-apply na natin yung recognition, valuation, at saka re proper reporting of intangibles in our financial statements. Kasi hanggang ngayon, if you try to look at the financial statements of uh, domestic companies at saka taxpayers in the Philippines, halos wala pong laman ang kanilang intangibles, no? So, Section 482, that transfer pricing law in the uh, United States, meron na po siyang provision on intangibles. Ano sabi niya? In the case of any transfer or license of any intangible property within the meaning of Section 936H3B, the income with respect to such transfer or license shall be commensurate with the income attributable to such intangible. Why sinabi niya dito na commensurate with the income attributable to such intangible? Because it's hard to value intangibles. No? Hindi siya pwede na i-value mo lang siya at cost. Why? Especially intangibles who has uh, business potentials. Ano yung mga examples ng intangibles? The copyrights, the logo, the trademark, no? the software. Those are all intangibles. And you cannot value them accurately. That's why ano yung sabi niya dito? commensurate with the income attributable to such intangible. Kung magkano yung kikitain ng intangible na yan. No? Okay. Ito pa, the United Nations Model Tax Convention, Article 9.1. Ito, meron tayo niyan eh, pero hindi ko mapakita sa inyo. Nandun siguro, Harry, oh. Yung United Nations Model Tax Convention. So, same lang din po siya doon sa uh, OECD Model Tax Convention. Also, Article 9. Paragraph 1, no? ano naman na yung sinabi niya, which is also the basis of transfer pricing. Where A, an enterprise of a contracting state participates directly or indirectly in the management, control, or capital of an enterprise of the other contracting state, or the same persons participate directly or indirectly in the management, control, or capital of an enterprise 
of a contracting state and an enterprise of the other contracting state and in either case conditions are made or imposed between the two enterprises in their commercial or financial relations which differ from those which will be made between independent enterprises but by reason of these conditions have not so accrued may be included in the profits of that enterprise and tasked accordingly. So take note that the UN Model Task Convention Article 9 is almost also the same with the Article 9 of the Model OECD Convention. Why? Because the, the OECD or the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development is the one who manages the Center for Task Administration in the world. And they have um, office in Paris, France, you know, with the, it's employed more than 2,000 employees. At sila po talaga yung nagre-research, uh, nagkakaroon ng mga study about the uh, policy administration of taxation in the world. Kaya yung United Nations halos nakapattern din lang yung uh, kanyang study sa OECD. If you want to know more about OECD, tingnan po ninyo sa uh, website nila yung OECD. No? Ang dami nila mga initiatives at saka mga study. <coughs> Pakipatay na yung aircon dito, Harry. Okay. So in uh, the arms length principle, the transactions within the group are compared to transactions between unrelated entities. So take note that, that in transfer pricing, Ano bang pinag-usapan dito? The price that you transferred from one group to another, from one company to another. And ano yung uh, pinag-usapan dito? The acceptable transfer price. So how are you going to know the acceptable uh, transfer price when the service or when the product is transferred to another related group of company? So anong gagawin mo? You have to compare it with the same transaction, with the same service, with the same product with that of the unrelated companies. Kaya pag walang unrelated companies at saka walang um, comparables, wala kang information about that, it's hard to uh, apply the arms length principle. No? Kasi in some cases, hindi mo, mo pwedeng, hindi ka makapag-compare because of walang information of the independent parties. And what makes it more difficult now, no, kasi ako, gumagawa ako ng transfer pricing analysis report of companies, no? Ang pinakamahirap pa ngayon is the Data Privacy Act, no? Pag ginamit mo yung data, halimbawa, kinuha mo yung mga data ng mga uh, companies na yan, tapos ginamit mo, pwede ka nilang inimanda because of the Data Privacy Act, no? Na ginamit mo, dapat magpapaalam ka pa sa kanila. And usually naman, pag nagpaalam ka, hindi ka nila i-allow, no? because of that data privacy act and that makes the work of the transfer pricing analyst difficult no because of the absence of data of the independent parties that uh, gamitin mong comparable no saan lang kami kumukuha sa is easy no because it's very expensive also if you buy from the database oh, there are there are uh, commercial databases that you can uh, uh, obtain data for your comparables and they are very expensive. Something like yung isang, ano mo may nag-offer sa akin, yung isang company lang ha, that uh, magkaroon ka ng comparables for one study, it will cost you pinaka-minimum na 100,000. No? That's why the transfer pricing analysis report is very expensive because of the uh, information that you will also purchase from sources. And hindi lang yan basta sources, they should be uh, reliable source. Kasi kung hindi yan reliable source, it will not stand scrutiny in court, then useless yung ginawa mong transfer pricing study. Okay? So how are you going to maintain the arms and principle as the international consensus? Kasi nga sabi nga natin, international consensus on transfer pricing, although uh, transfer pricing has also... Um, many detractors yung ayaw nila yung transfer pricing no because it's hard to implement no and then uh, parang suntok sa buwan daw no and then uh, transfer pricing is not an exact science parang uh, nanghuhula ka lang parang uh, hindi siya accurate no? 
So, yun yung mga sinasabi ng mga um, against sa transfer pricing. Okay. So, OECD member countries continue to be that the arms and principles should govern the evaluation of transfer prices among associated enterprises. So, kahit marami pa detractors ang transfer pricing, the member countries, sino yung mga member countries ng OECD? These are the highly industrialized uh, countries in the world. No? Sila yung mga uh, ma, ma first class countries in the world. No? United States, uh, Japan, Australia, Canada. No? Sila, sila yung uh, mga member countries ng uh, OECD. The arms and principle is sound in theory since it provides the closest approximation, approximation of the working of the open market in cases where property such as goods, other types of tangible assets or intangible assets is transferred or services are rendered between associated enterprises. That's why when you make a transfer pricing analysis report, it should be a uh, work of a team, no? And who composed the team for the transfer pricing uh, uh, analysis team? There should be a lawyer, there should be an accountant, there should be a statistician, an economist, kasi napakalaki ng economic conditions, the analysis of economic conditions, when you compare two transactions, no? The related, the related parties and the independent transactions. So, dapat may economist. And most of all, there should be an industry expert. No? Especially if the transfer pricing cases reaches the court. Anong gagawin ng korte to resolve the transfer pricing disputes? Hinapatawag po yung transfer pricing ana analyst. No? Especially, transfer pricing analysis is part of the documentation requirement. That's why in some uh, topics, the free webinar that we will be conducting, Nandu doon yung mga uh, uh, rules and regulations as implemented by the BAR ngayon that uh, should be complied by the company here in the Philippines. Ito kasi basic lang to. No? So, hindi natin siya i-discuss dito uh, in some free webinar. So, if you try to look at our schedule, puro free webinar tayo for the month of June and puro po transfer pricing. Oh, we have another kind of seminars pagdating na po ng July. Why? Kasi lahat po ng mga PowerPoints namin is pinalitan. No? And uh, for your information, it took us time talaga to finish yung transfer pricing analysis report. We have at least 13 companies no, na ginawa. Eh kami-kami lang. Kaya laglag yung mata sa paggawa ng transfer pricing analysis report. And dugtungan ba ng... Um, PowerPoint for the the uh, training, no? so hindi kaya ng powers. Unti unti lang. That's why for the month of June, since ano na natin to transfer pricing, so ito na yung inuna natin for uh, basic information about transfer pricing. And if you try to look at our schedule, this only for two hours. Why? Kasi webinar po ito eh, no? Di nila inaalaw yung mga very long na uh, duration ng seminar kasi sabi nila hindi na din daw kayang i-absorb ng participant. No? But uh, we will have discussion for the uh, two hours and then after that question and answer tayo. No? Unlimited yung time natin doon. Okay. So this uh, move from the arms and principle would abandon the sound theoretical basis. Actually, ito pong ginawa kong uh, slide sa inyo some of these are for your reading only kasi nandito yung mga explanations about the advantages and disadvantages of the arms and principle as compared to sa ibang um, principle na gusto din nila sana na gamitin in lieu of the transfer pricing. No? Ano tong isang uh, uh, gusto nilang gamitin? The global formulary apportionment. Itong global formulary apportionment we will discuss the transfer pricing methods mamaya. Parang similar din to sa gross uh, spl profit split method kasi meron siyang predetermined formula. But, anong sabi nila dito? The global formulary apportionment is not as acceptable as the arms and principle because predetermined na siya. And of course, if the uh, rates are predetermined, nag-iiba yung facts and circumstances of the case. 
And ang arms length principle is factual. It is based on the actual circumstances of the case. Ano talaga yung ginawa during the uh, transactions, no? Kaya mas acceptable yung arms length principle as compared to the global apportionment, uh, a formulary apportionment na uh, ginawa nila na best alternative with the uh, trans, uh, arms length principle accepted by the transfer pricing. No? Okay. So, we compare the arms length principle with that of the uh, global formulary apportionment. No? The global formulary apportionment has been promoted as an alternative to the arms length principle by advocates na sabi nila it will uh, provide a greater administrative convenience and certainty to taxpayers. No? Kasi ang cry of the taxpayers Sa OECD, there is no certainty when it comes to taxation. Bakit wala certainty ang taxation? Because kahit pagkaganda-ganda na yung records mo, pagdating na ng audit, may findings pa rin yung taxpayers. No? Kaya kahit ibang bansa, ibang countries, they are crying for tax certainty. No? Pero yung, yung administration, wala silang pwedeng ibigay na tax certainty. Although the policy makers natin, the OECD, is trying to do it, Kasi uh, mahirap ang taxation. No? So during the time that you file your income tax return, your VAT return, kahit nasabihin mo na uh, lahat na report mo na pagdating ng uh, audit, may findings pa rin yung examiner. No? Okay. Okay. Separate accounting method is inappropriate for highly integrated groups because it's difficult to determine what contribution its associated enterprise makes to the overall profit of the m and &E. Mahirap po mag-compare ng isang company, especially that company or group have a very complicated structures. So, very complicated structures. Sometimes, Sinasadya din nila to complicate their structures para makatipid ng taxes. No? So that's why it makes also yung principle ng formulary apportionment very hard to apply. So apart from these arguments, advocates contend that global formulary apportionment reduces compliance cost for taxpayers since in principle only one set of accounts would be preferred for the group for domestic tax purposes. But... Of course, hindi siya ganun ka effective. No? Okay. So Okay, so most significant concern with global formulary apportionment is difficulty of implementing the system in a manner that both protects against double taxation and ensures single taxation. Okay. Since we have, sabi ko nga sa inyo, we have a very limited time, let's now go to the first poll question. Hari, ready ka na? Okay. Sinend mo na sa kanila? Ito nga, pinost ko na ngayon sa ano. Okay. So, nandyan po yung uh, poll question number one natin. No? Anong sabi? In your opinion, opinion lang to ha, kaya nga taos dito is poll poll. Uh, question, no? just to make you alive and uh, to participate. No? In your opinion, the arms length principle is A? Umamili po kayo. Since opinion lang to, we, we will not say na mali yung sinasabi nyo. Ha? A, useful in establishing the correct taxable base of taxpayer. B, not useful as the methods used are not accurate no? sa transfer pricing. Kasi mag-compare tayo. C, relevant to determine the correct transfer price in a related party transactions. No? So, uh, since uh, transfer pricing siya, magko-compare ka ng independent party with that of the related party. So, uh, ma ma-determine mo, mo ba yung correct transfer price? Anyway, i-discuss natin yan more doon sa transfer pricing methods natin. No? Uh, pero dito, opinion nyo lang to. So, relevant ba siya to, to determine the correct transfer price? And letter D, difficult to apply because it is not an exact science. No? Imagine nyo na lang na yung arms and principle, 
uh, i-compare mo yung related party transactions with the independent part party transactions. So, gaano yun kahirap? No? So, it is difficult to apply because it is not an exact science. No? Kasi, paano mo i-compare yung dalawang bagay? Especially, uh, yung transactions magkaiba yan. Hmm? So, choose your answer. No? Uh, paano nila ibigay yung answer nila, Hari? Uh, may link po dun sa comment section. Click na po dun para dun nyo po kayo sasagot sa form. May form po dun. Okay. So, please uh, submit your answer. Now. Ilan yung viewers natin ngayon? 71 po. Okay, so we're expecting 71 answers, no? Kasi opinion lang to. May 23 na sumagot na. Kasi, kasi po, yung, yung certificate of attendance ninyo, uh, you are being monitored then for the certificate, no? Kaya, please participate. Huh? Okay. So, in your opinion, the arm's length principle is, letter A, useful in establishing the correct taxable base of the taxpayer. That is what the OECD is trying to uh, make, no? Na magiging useful talaga siya. And even in the uh, cases decided by the court, and even in the actual practice, talagang yun talaga yung gusto ng establish ng OECD, that the arm's length principle is useful in establishing the taxable base of the taxpayer. No? Letter B, not useful as the method used are not accurate. No? There are disputes. That's why in some uh, transfer pricing cases, talo din yung tax authority when it comes na sa court. Why? Kasi hindi accurate. No? And para sa akin, ang nakita ko talaga, uh, it's the how the taxpayer no, uh, defend their uh, allegations in court and especially documentation. Pagka lahat ng transactions mo are properly accounted, tapos yung accounting standards na follow mo, more so, na, na, nakakatulong po pagdating sa transfer pricing disputes. No? Uh, letter C, relevant to determine the correct transfer price in a related party transaction. Yes, din po. No? Very relevant din siya. That's why uh, they developed the arms and principle kasi ito talaga yung uh, ginagamit ng tax authority in order to uh, determine the correct price of the related party transactions. Kaya nga compare sa independent party transactions because the related party transactions are controlled. No, Sometimes there is artificial price management. So, doon na sa same na independent parties kasi walang element of control doon. No? And then letter D, we have difficult to apply because it is not an exact science. Yes. No? Kasi if you try to make a transfer pricing study, arm's length range. Hindi isang price lang when you come up. And that uh, price na nasa range are all correct. No? Kaya there are cases nga na meron siyang yung taxpayer alleged or the tax authority no? alleged a different uh, price range. Pero ang ginawa ng transfer pricing analyst is range of prices. No? So doon sa range of prices, iba yung price na ginamit ng tax authority, iba din yung ginamit ng taxpayer. So pagdating na sa court, they are both correct. Di ba? So, because the transfer pricing is not an exact science, that's why depende na yan sa mga documentation mo and doon sa treatment mo na uh, i-value yan o i-weigh yan ng court. No? So, that ends our first uh, topic on uh, arm's length principle. Now, let's go to our next topic which is the transfer pricing methods. Meron mga bagong nag-ano, Hari? Meron po. Okay. Sige. Kasi very limited na yung time natin. Kulang na. Sige, let's go to the transfer pricing methods and what are these methods used by uh, transfer pricing. Uh, Di ba sabi natin sa arms and principle, we compare. We compare the related party transactions 
with that of the independent party transaction. So how do we compare? We use the methods. And what are the methods used in transfer pricing? So, so we have to select the most appropriate transfer pricing method to the circumstances of the case. Yung RR2-2030 natin, which is the transfer pricing guidelines here in the Philippines, requires that the transfer pricing analyst, no, pag gumawa ng transfer pricing analysis report, apply all the methods, these five methods of the uh, OECD. But if you try to look at the Ramo 1 2019, which is the uh, transfer pricing audit guidelines also of the Philippines, Meron dyan siyang sinasabi na sixth method. So, depende na yan kung ano yung ipopropose ng transfer pricing analyst at papaano niya ginamit yung sixth method. No? But uh, OECD uh, recommend only the five methods. No? So, anong gagawin mo dun sa five methods? Apply all the methods, sabi ng RR2-2013. Apply all the methods and then recommend the best method. No? So, what are the methods used in transfer pricing? No? used in comparing. No? So, ito yun. Uh, una is the comparable and controlled price method. So, by just looking at the name, ano yung pina, pina ko compare dito? We compare the price. No? Or, the comparable and controlled price is what we call also as the cap method. No? Cap means comparable and controlled price method. No? So, anong ginagawa dito sa transfer pricing method na to? It compares the price charged for property or services transferred in a controlled transaction to the price charged for property or services transferred in a comparable and controlled transactions in comparable circumstances. No? I have my book on basic transfer pricing. Doon naka-explain fully at saka may mga illustrations po tayo doon on how to compare. No? The, the price of the book is 500. No? So, yung mga gusto mag-order, uh, uh, you just, uh, ano ba yun? Yung, sabihin nyo lang yung inyong mga pangalan and then pinapadala lang po natin sa uh, pinapadeliver. No? Plus the delivery charges. Pag Metro Manila, 100 plus lang. No? Pagka medyo nasa outside Metro Manila, Visayas or Mindanao, medyo mahal siya. Pero, um, maabot ng 300, no? Na mga, mga 200 plus lang siya inaabot yung delivery charge. No? Kasi doon, makita nyo talaga how this uh, comparable and controlled price method may mga illustrations, no? So, in the comparable and controlled price method, we compare the price of the same product with that of the price of the product sold by independent party. Kasi, ang kinukumpare natin, the one we're making a transfer pricing analysis report is always the party with a related party. Kasi ang independent party transactions, hindi po yan hinahanapan ng transfer pricing analysis report. No? So, sino yung hinahanapan ng transfer pricing analysis report? Those companies with a related party transactions. At ang sino yung related party transactions? Those companies with group of companies and then nagkakaroon sila ng transactions with the other companies. No, halimbawa, yung isa manufacturing. The other related party is distributor. The other is a reseller. The other is a financing company. The other is a delivery company. So, sila-sila lang. So, how do you price the uh, product or the services between them? No? So, you, you compare the price of that same product or services with the independent party or the unrelated parties. At yun ang mahirap hanapin. Why? Kasi mostly, related parties. No? Pag related parties na yung comparables mo, hindi mo pwedeng gamitin. You have to eliminate that as comparable. You cannot choose them as comparable. No? So, if there is any difference between the two prices, no, halimbawa, yung difference, you have to uh, discover kung ano yung factor na nagkaroon ng difference yung uh, price ng same product na yan. No? So, indicate that the conditions of the commercial and financial relations of the associated enterprises are not arm's length. Pero hindi naman automatic, no? And that the price in the uncontrolled transactions may need to be substituted 
for the price in the control transaction. So, kasi nagko-compare ka eh. Bakit ang price ng bag na to is 1,000 sa related parties? Bakit dito sa unrelated parties, 700 lang? No? So, you have to account for the 300 na differences. Oh. So, during the accounting, mas masabi mo na uh, there is a 300 uh, difference. Why? Kasi itong bag na 1,000 by related parties, maganda siya. Durable. And then, uh, yung trademark niya, yung logo niya, kilala. Yung isa, hindi naman branded. No? So, you account for the differences. Pag hindi mo ma-account yung differences, then ang ibig sabihin noon, hindi sila properly priced. No? So, so, by the difference of that 300 between the related price of 1,000 and that of the unrelated Uh, price na 700, pag hindi mo ma-account yung 300, then ang ibig sabihin, mispriced yung 1,000. The correct price is the independent party. That is the principle of arm's length. No? So, since we compare the price at hindi natin ma-account yung 300, we have to adjust. Anong sabi ng uh, transfer pricing? Since mispriced ang related parties, you have to adjust. So, anong i-adjust mo? I-lower mo yung price na 700. Hindi siya 1,000. No? So, pagdating na sa actual na disallowances, no? kakaroon niya ng deficiency. Why? Kasi, halimbawa, dun sa purchases mo, pinurchase mo siya ng 1,000 per bag. Pagdating na dun sa transfer pricing audit, yung purchases mo na 1,000, ginawa na lang na 700 which is the case of the GlaxoSmithKline, the famous and most controversial case in transfer pricing, yung GlaxoSmithKline in Canada. No? Anong nangyari? Mag-a-adjust ka ngayon ng price mo. No? So, yung, yung 1,000 na price mo, sa purchases mo, gawin mo na lang yan 700. So, what happened to your net income or and your gross uh, profit? Lalaki siya. No? So, since malaki na yung gross profit mo, lalaki na yung net income mo, lalaki na yung tax. That's why, Any adjustment that will come up doon sa transfer pricing methods that you apply in comparing the independent party transactions and the related party transactions, that it will result to deficiency income. So, yan ang purpose ng transfer pricing audit. Okay. So, when you compare, ano dapat? None of the differences, if any, between the transactions being compared or between the enterprises undertaking those transactions could materially affect the price in the open market. So, pag nag-compare ka na, dapat daw yung price between the enterprises could materially affect the price in the open market. So, dapat yung differences na yan hindi maka-affect ng price nila. Or, halimbawa naman, yung 300 na yan, uh, reasonably accurate adjustment can be made to eliminate the material effect of such differences. Halimbawa, yung sa example natin, na 700 tapos 1,000, so there is a difference of 300. Na-account po kung saan galing yung 300. Halimbawa na lang, yung sa related parties, maganda yung kanya king. Nag-add on siya ng uh, ibang product features na wala doon sa independent party. Napakasimple na yung independent party. Ito, ginandahan niya ng packaging, nilagyan niya ng pangalan, nilagyan niya ng additional na mga decoration, yung kanyang bag. So, that accounts for the 300. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Na-account niya yung differences. No? So, reasonable yung kanyang presyo na 1,000 kasi ito namang 700. Napakasimple lang. At Uh, iba yung feature doon sa 1,000 na bag. No? So, yan po yung sinasabi dito sa arms and principle natin. No? Ano yung observation? It may be difficult to find a transaction between independent prices that is similar enough to a controlled transaction such that no differences of material effect on price. Alam nyo sa paggamit ng comparable and controlled price method, ano, ano yung mga examples of the uh, product na dapat comparable and control price yung gagamitin natin? Ito sa mga rental. No? Imbawa, nasa lesser ka. 
as a rental company ka, you are leasing properties. So, dapat ang gamitin mo dyan, comparable and controlled price method. At sino yung comparables mo? Your comparables are also lessors of property in your same area. No? Kasi, rimbawa, lessor ka ng property sa uh, highly commercial place. Dapat doon ka rin kumuha. No? Ito ah, ito actual findings to. Related parties sa economic zone sila. Related, uh, situated. 15 pesos per square meter yung pa-open niya sa related parties. Why? Related parties, same lang din yung sila na owner, you eh, know? So, yung building, industrial building niya, at saka yung kanyang lupa, pinapa-open niya, dun sa related party, 15 pesos per square meter. But if you try to look at sa same area, how much is the rental per square meter? 200 plus, no? So, sa comparable and controlled price method during the transfer pricing audit, siguradong potential findings yun ng examiner, no? Yung report niya na income is only 15 pesos per square meter. E 19,000 square meter yan. Anong gagawin ng examiner? Multiply it by uh, the number of square meter and the prevailing price in the area, which is 200. E 13 pesos lang yun sa iyo. Ang laki ng discrepancy. You pay now additional income tax. Mind you, ain't it uh, findings when it comes to transfer pricing audit affects only income tax, no? Hindi niya pakikialaman yung VAT. So, income tax lang. So, kung uh, ano yung mga tax consequences dyan which involve income tax, yun lang i-collect ng transfer pricing. Okay? So, uh, ano pa yung unique sa price? Pagka na gamit ka ng price, the price of a commodity or a product is influenced by the characteristics and by the nature of the product. Pag nag-iba yung characteristics, nag-iba yung nature ng product, mag-iiba din yung price. Ano, ano pa yung industry na dapat comparable and controlled price method? Um, service companies. Yung uh, mga, yung nasa human resource, yung mga recruitment agencies. No? Bakit? Ito yung, ito yung uh, price mo that you uh, make with the independent enterprises. No? Nagpo-provide ka ng mga personnel sa independent companies. Yung presyo mo is uh, 4,500 halibawa or 1,000 or 800 per hour. Pero doon sa related parties mo, ang price mo per hour of that same uh, of that same position that you provide in your related parties is 400 lang no so as compared to 800 at 1000 so kalahati so that is another potential findings ng examiner pagdating sa transfer pricing audit so ano na naman gagawin ng ng examiner i-adjust niya ngayon yung price uh, bakit sa related party mo 400 per hour lang yung charge mo and then, dito naman sa independent parties, ang charge nila is 1,000 to uh, or 800. No? So, kalahati lang yung charge mo. No? So, magbabayad ka ngayon additional income. No? So, there are uh, industries na possibly or dapat ang comparable and controlled price. No? Okay. Now, let's go to another method, which is the resale price method. The resale price method, ano naman ang compare dito? Gross profit. No? So, it begins with the price at which the product has been purchased from associated enterprises that is resold to the independent enterprise. No? So, bibili ka, kaya nga resale eh, bibili ka ng isang product and then, ibenta mo ngayon sa iba. So, anong ginawa mo? Nagdagdag ka lang, nag, nag mark up ka. So, anong kinukumbir sa resale price? Gross profit o yung dinagdag mo na amount. No? Eh, halimbawa, kasi ito yung nag-benchmark ang BIR dito noon. No? Halimbawa, yung construction, nag-mark up siya ng 10% lang. Pero along the uh, same uh, industry or same construction, average is uh, 50%. So, bakit ikaw 10% lang? Yung iba 50%. Kaya logi ka. No? So, my benchmark. Dito sa resale price method, we compare the gross profit. No? 
And uh, pag gumagawa po kayo ng transfer pricing analysis report ninyo, meron kayong pipiliin ng mga companies na comparables. No? And uh, i-compare ninyo yung kanilang gross profit. No? So dapat yung uh, comparables that you use should pass the criteria provided for by Ramo 1-2019. Meron doon general criteria at saka financial criteria. No? Okay. So, the price is reduced by appropriate gross margin or the resale price margin. No? So, yun yung, in short, yun yung ating uh, i-compare. And what are the uh, factors that influence the gross profit? Yung gross profit, di ba? Sales, less direct cost or uh, purchases, no? What's the gross profit? So, paano ang influence? Ano yung mga factors that influence the gross profit? Ito yung mga uh, cost, o oh, direct cost. So, saan naman naman makakatalo? Saan na naman yung mga major findings dyan? Pagka, uh, reclassify mo kung ano yung mga contents ng cost mo. So, dapat you follow also the accounting standards. Hindi pwede yung i-distort mo ngayon yung cost, dagdagan mo, bawasan mo, para makontrol mo yung gross profit. No? So, yun po yung sa resale price method. Now, let's go to the cost plus method. No? So, ito na yung third na method. Kasi yung una method natin is, we compare the price. And then, in the resale price method, we compare the gross profit. And then, in the cost plus method, which is the third kind of method uh, ng OECD, is we also compare the gross profit. No? Pero in this case, ano yung ginagawa nila dito? Karamihan na, karamihan maraming gumagamit ng cost plus method. Why? Kasi ito yung mga reimbursable expenses nila or ito yung total cost nila dito sa Pilipinas and then they just add a markup and then uh, yun na yung uh, gross profit. Huh? So usually, magkano yung uh, nasa sir, nasa service uh, agreement nila the the plus no the cost is something like 7% 5% 10% no so if you have comparables which has a higher uh, gross profit halimbawa halimbawa ah, yung nasa ano ka business process outsourcing ka sinakita ko nag-increase na sila eh no and even sa marketing sa pharmaceuticals nag-increase na sila because they are already aware of the uh, transfer pricing, no? Kaya nga nagre-revise na sila ng transfer pricing policies. So, when you revise the transfer pricing policies, ano yung nire-revise nyo? Ini-increase nila yung gross profit, no? So, anong nangyari? Tinataasan na nila ngayon yung gross profit because sigurado ma-audit ma sila ng transfer pricing. Halimbawa, your company, no? Service company ka. Ang gross markup mo is 5%. Do you think you will survive? No. Do you think a company with a 5% cost plus markup will survive? No. Ano sabi nila? It has no substance at it has no economic reason. No. Bakit? Yung, yung cost mo, yung markup mo na 5% will co cover your, your gross profit. Your profit will cover your operating expenses. Do you think you will survive sa 5% mo na markup? No. Hindi. So, do you think you are doing business? No, you are not doing business. So, since transfer pricing is economic taxation, and the purpose or the economic purpose of an entity is to make business and have profits, then, anong tawag dyan sa transaction mo? It is a sham transaction. Why? Kasi, hindi profit yung purpose mo. Bakit hindi profit? Well, yun lang yung markup mo. No? So, yan, yan po yung mga uh, batayan natin when it comes to transfer pricing. That's why, ako naman, when I make transfer pricing analysis, I really recommend. No? Hindi ko pinafinalize talaga yung uh, report unless na I have discussed to the management. No? And they have to improve. Or, uh, yung iba na papayag, pinapaamin ko to increase their gross profit. Kasi yung cost plus method, cost lang to eh. And then you add your uh, plus. So yung iba 7%, yung iba 3%, 5%, you will not survive. Pagka service ka kasi, service um, entity ka, 
sometimes ang markup mo or yung plus mo sa cost is 100%. No? 50% maliit na yon. 60%, 80%, pwede pa. Pero yung 5%, 10%, you are not doing business. No? Ano yun? You are doing service to your parent company or your other company. No? Okay. So, basahin ninyo yung mga theory about the cost plus method. And then, let's go to the uh, fourth, no? Fourth method, which is the transactional net margin method. Ano po itong trans transactional net margin method? Ang kinukumpare naman sa transactional net margin method from the word itself or from the title itself is the net margin, no? Okay. So, ano yung uh, net margin dito? Saan na ba net margin and what influences the net margin? Pag tinignan mo yung income statement mo, you start with the sales, less direct cost of services or less uh, purchases for uh, merchandising business. Then you have the gross profit, less operating expenses. Then you have the net margin. Remember, ha, may mga cases na to na um, decided in the court. Do not include the extraordinary expenses. Only the operating ordinary expenses. Yung extraordinary, hindi po yan sinasama. No? Ano yung natalo na case doon? In-include niya yung goodwill. No? At dinepreciate niya yung goodwill. Transfer sila ng transfer, gawa sila ng complicated structures, no? na alam ko naman na talagang sinadya nila. No? And then, uh, nag-recognize sila ng goodwill sa katatransfer nila ng kung iba't ibang mga companies na yan. And a very, very huge amount of uh, goodwill. And then, they depreciate it for 16 years. No? And during those years, puro sila net loss. Why puro net loss? Kasi depreciate mo yung goodwill na out of nowhere naman yan ang ginawa nyo lang. No? So, anong nangyari noon? Dinala na sa korte. So, that was... Uh, disallowed. Why? Because goodwill is not an ordinary expense. No? So, how do you determine the net margin or the net income? No? So, there are uh, yung dapat i-include mo at saka hindi include. And you follow the accounting standards. No? Although, for tax purposes, sa uh, halimbawa, depreciation ng expenses, we follow only the cost method, no? Hindi, hindi yung mga fair value. Okay. So, the transactional uh, net margin method operates in a manner similar to the cost plus and resale price methods. Bakit? Kasi, uh, influence din sila ng price, no? At saka hindi sila yung, yung ito yung price, ito yung uh, price na isa, ito yung i-compare mo. No? Ito yung parang generic. Why? Kasi the whole amount during the year, uh, yung gross profit and that gross profit contains na so many factors no so so that is similar to the cost plus and resale price method the similarity means that in order to be applied reliably the transactional net margin method must be applied in a manner consistent with the manner in which the resale price or cost plus method is applied no although sa actual practice at saka sa mga findings pag ginamit mo na yung transactional net margin method usually may mga intangibles involved. No? Kasi, kaya nga uh, net margin ka na, uh, gagamitin mo yung net income, yun na i-compare mo, because sometimes wala kang information about the gross profit. No? Kaya transactional net margin is uh, the best method. Okay, so, actually, pagdating po sa um, transactional net margin method, kasi net margin na to, there are so many profit level indicator na pwede mong i-apply. Ito na yung berry ratio, ito na yung uh, return on assets, ito na yung iba-iba, uh, no? Yung ROSI, yung return on capital employed. Very uh, useful na sila pagdating sa transactional net margin method. No? So, functional analysis of the controlled and uncontrolled transaction is required to determine whether the transactions are comparable and what adjustment may be necessary to obtain reliable results. Actually, napakaganda po ng cases ng transfer pricing. No? Pag naumpisahan nyo nang basahin yung mga cases ng transfer pricing, 
mahahaba lang kasi I go for the long cases. No? Hindi ako nagsushortcut when it comes to reading the cases. Why? Kasi along the way, how, how the company make those um, scheme na, na ano ko siya eh, na nasusundan ko siya and then sabi ko talagang itong transfer pricing na to gawa talaga to ng mga tao nag-iisip no kasi kung hindi ka mag-iisip hindi mo mo maiisip na kaya nilang gawin to eh and also kaya rin siyang i-discover ng mga uh, tax authorities by applying the arms and principle no kaya pag naumpisa na ninyo yung transfer pricing may enjoy nyo na mayroon nga nag-message sa akin ma'am Di pa mahirap ng transfer pricing? Sabi ko, tingnan nyo lang yung basic principle ng transfer pricing. Once na alam nyo na yan, ma-appreciate nyo, ma-enjoy nyo na yung transfer pricing. No? I, I started transfer pricing way back in 2008. No? I do it on my own initiative na nag-study ako ng taxation. And I want uh, to study international taxation. So pum pumunta ako ng... Uh, Kuala Lumpur because uh, yun yung nearest dito sa Asia and uh, if it's very expensive kung pupunta ka ng Netherlands no? kasi sila yung nagtuturo na international taxation sa Netherlands it will cost you millions there so punta ako ng Kuala Lumpur it cost me 200,000 yung 2 days no? kaya sabi nung German friend of mine sabi niya why are you giving this uh, seminar for free it's very expensive sabi ko okay lang po yun kasi Uh, basic lang naman to, no? Uh, we are offering our also certificate uh, program in transfer pricing for one week, but because of this webinar, dun sa face-to-face yun, but because of this uh, webinar na, na uh, very limited lang po yung time, four hours a day, so we will make the five-day certificate program as the ten-day certificate program in transfer pricing. Pero mag-overhaul mag kami ng uh, mga modules, that's, that's why it will take us... Uh, Quite sometimes, hindi na namin yan ma-offer uh, this year. Pero expect that we have a better uh, uh, course in the certificate program in transfer pricing next year. No? Kasi mas advanced na siya. And uh, I have to finish also my uh, advanced program in international taxation hanggang September pa po siya. That's also one reason na nalaglag talaga yung mata ko because of so many readings requirements and then you have to pass their uh, examination in order to be certified no so talagang inano natin yan eh uh, kumbaga sa ano pag uh, may tiyaga may nilaga no kasi at my age kung hindi ako magtiyaga eh wala na akong nilaga kasi eh, ano na retired na ayaw nang uh, gumalaw dahil tired na eh sabi ko kailangan pa rin natin so that we will be serviceable, no? At saka, para hindi obsolete yung ating services. Eh, kung hindi ka mag-update, well, what happened to you? Diyan na ka na lang sa isang tabi. Anong bibilangin mo? Butike. So, ngayon, this transfer pricing cases yung binibilang natin. Yun nga lang, laglag yung mata mo sa hirap, no? But uh, it's very rewarding. Okay. So, this uh, transactional net margin method is a one-sided method. No? Or transactional net margin method may be applicable in cases where one of the parties makes all the unique and valuable contribution involved in the control transaction. Ito yung sinasabi ko na karamihan sa transactional net margin method. May mga contributions na sila just like the intangible property. No? Okay. And... Itong one-sided method, the cost plus method, resale price method, and also the transactional net margin method, nire-require na yung tested party sa kanila. No? So, ano itong tested party? Is ito yung kailangan, uh, the less complex uh, functions yung kanyang uh, ginagawa para magiging uh, tested party siya. No? Example, Example ah, sa resale price method. Diba yung resale price, you buy the, the product and then ibenta mo. Sa transactional uh, net margin method, ganun din. But you compare the net margin. So, sino yung tested party? Halimbawa, uh, that the transactions of the group is from the manufacturer. The manufacturer sold the uh, product to a distributor which is a related party. And that distributor sold that 
same product to a reseller which is already a related party and also that reseller sold the product to an independent third party which is the consumer. So in that case, sino ang tested party sa kanila? Is it the manufacturer? Is it the distributor? Or is it the reseller? Or is yung tatlo na lang na yan, no? Is it the manufacturer, the reseller, or the distributor? Sino sa kanila? Sino sa kanila yung less complex, no? Pag si distributor, binili niya yung product from the manufacturer, wala na siyang dinagdag. Pwedeng siya. Halimbawa naman si reseller, binili niya yung, yung product from the distributor. Wala na rin siya dinagdag. Wala na siyang mga warranty or whatever. Uh, very simple lang yung function niya. Pwede rin na siya, no? ang magiging tested party. But if si distributor, binili niya yung product, ang dami pa niyang ginawa, nag-advertise pa siya, nagdagdag pa siya ng packaging, then that distributor cannot be a tested party. Bakit? Kasi complicated na yung cost structure niya. So para maging tested party ka, very simple na yung function mo. Huh? So nasa ano na yan? Isa pa yan sa masakit na ulo para sa transfer pricing analyst. Huh? And then there are strengths and weaknesses for the transactional net margin method. Ano? Um, ano yung strength niya? Uh, net profit indicators. Ito yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na may return on assets, operating income to sales, the berry ratio. No? Uh, kasi one-sided method siya. And then uh, practical strength of transactional net margin is... Uh, it is necessary to examine a financial indicator for only one of the associated enterprises or the tested party. No? Ma malalaman nyo na yan sa actual study. No? Hindi, hindi nyo ma-picture yan ngayon dito. But uh, the actual study, kung meron kayong transfer pricing analysis, then kikita nyo na yan. No? And then next, we have the uh, transactional uh, profit spread method. No? So the transactional profit spread method seeks to eliminate the effect on profits of special conditions. Ano-ano yung um, ini-split dito? The profit. No? Why ini-split yung profit? Kailan ginagamit yung profit split method? Pag ma, there is a group of companies and then their uh, transactions are highly integrated. Paano mo masabi na highly integrated? Because of the group of companies, the function of one company or related party is related to the function of the other company or is is uh, augmentation of the uh, function of another company or you cannot uh, complete the whole business cycle of the company without that contribution from different companies so ano sabi natin doon those are integrated uh, functions at ang gagamitin mo doon is the method, which is the profit split method. In the profit split method, wala po kayong i-compare, no? Na independent parties. Ano lang i-compare mo? How the independent parties also split their uh, profit. No? Pero yung transactions na i-compare nyo, wala. Why? Kasi yung profit split method natin, uh, sometimes, Kulang yung comparables mo, yung mga information mo about independent companies. So, what happened? Ang gagawin mo ngayon is to split the profit. Ang problema mo dito sa profit split methods are the allocation key. Paano mo i-allocate ngayon yung profit? And what kind of profit? No? So, sa bago actually, uh, maraming bago dito sa profit split method. No? Now, sometimes... Uh, they we they split the profit hindi yung net profit no there are cases na ang ini split nila is the gross profit and then each party will claim their own operating expenses no so depende on the actual situation kaya nga kailangan yung transfer pricing analyst mo is um, knowledgeable and also alam niya yung industry no kaya nga dapat may industry experts talaga okay so, references to profit should be taken as applying equally to losses. No? Kasi sometimes, uh, yung isang company, loss. So, halimbawa, there are 10 group of companies. And that group of companies, ang um, uh, 5 dyan is uh, gaining. No? 
five naman is losing. So, alam nga naman na yung mga losing company hindi mo bibigyan, no? And as to what profit. Ito yung nangyayari ah. The company here in the Philippines is providing services to the parent company. Wala siyang business dito sa Pilipinas except doing service to the parent company. Lahat ng sales na sa parent company, walang sales dito. But the function of the Philippine company is very important and it helps the parent company. So naturally, loss lang siya kasi bakit? Wala siyang income na uh, re-report dito sa Pilipinas kasi ang ginagawa sa Pilipinas, reimbursement of expenses only. No? Nasaan ang income? Nasa parent company. And that parent company is somewhere in Europe, somewhere in the United States. No? So naturally, loss lang ng loss for, uh, for how many years yung company dito sa Pilipinas. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Hindi pwede na hindi mo siya bigyan ng share of the profits. That's why the profit split method, you have to consider also the companies that are losing. No? Kasi may reason yan eh. The, those companies might be losing kasi wala naman sales do, doon sa kanila and they are just performing services to the other company. No? Support lang sila. Okay. Okay, so what are the strengths and uh, weaknesses of the profit split method? No? It can offer solution for highly integrated operations for which one-sided method would not be appropriate. No? And then... Uh, Okay. Uh, transactional profit split method, uh, ano pa ang strength niya? It offers flexibility by taking into account specific, unique facts and circumstances of the uh, enterprises. No? And then there are uh, factors no, na pwedeng gamitin. Okay. So, let's now go to the uh, second uh, poll question, Harry. No? So, the transfer pricing methods under the OECD transfer pricing guidelines are letter A, difficult to apply because of lack of comparable independent transactions. Letter B, sometimes not applicable because of the absence of information about the internal and external comparables. Yun yung mga uh, companies na i-compare mo. C, not easy to implement because it is difficult to find independent transactions due to the Data Privacy Act or the Republic Act 10173. And letter D, easy to implement because independent parties are cooperative in giving documentary requirements. So, choose your answer A, B, C, or D and then send it to our uh, San Hari sa, sa Google Form. Sa Google Form po, no? Because na po that will form part of your compliance to uh, get our certificate. Huh? Okay. Uh, let's have a five minutes break before I uh, continue with the five comparability factors. Ito, mabilis lang tayo dito, no? And then the documentation requirements. No? Let's have a five minutes break.
Okay, so let's uh, continue with our discussion, and this is our third topic on the five comparability factors. No, there are explanations on its contractual uh, on its uh, comparability factors here, but it's for your uh, reading. Na, no, we only have twenty minutes more left, so basahin yun na yung nasa ano natin uh, PowerPoint yung handouts na binigay namin sa inyo and then from there then you can expound your knowledge no so what are the five comparability factors we have the contractual terms functions assets and risk or the uh, far analysis the characteristics of property or services the economic circumstances and the business strategies no so if you try to look at the arms length principle ano ano ba ang arms length principle you combine you compare the uh, transactions, commercial and financial transactions of a related party transactions with that of the independent transactions. How do you compare? You use these five comparability factors para hindi kayo maligaw. No? Ako yun yung uh, sekreto ko when I make a transfer pricing analysis. Ina-isa-isa ko to sila. And if, alimbawa, service uh, company yan, be very particular about the service agreements. No? Huwag kayong maniwala, alibaba, construction companies, mamula kaming contracts during the year. Hindi po yan totoo. Why? Because our civil law requires na meron talagang kontrata. No? Pagka ang uh, endeavor mo or yung project mo is costing you millions of pesos, hindi pwedeng walang kontrata yan. I try to look at the contractual terms. No? Doon sa contractual terms, nandun yan yung mga provisions. May mga sekreto yan dyan. May mga cuts or provisions yan dyan. May mga twist dyan. Kaya pagka hindi pa kayo uh, well-versed no, sa mga services, be very careful about the contracts. No? Kasi may mga i-add on yan sila doon ng mga clauses na hindi nyo alam pagdating na sa dispute, talo pala kayo because of that clause. Kaya be very careful no, sa contractual terms. Also, the contractual terms are very, very rich source of transfer pricing issues. No? Anong sabi ng OECD? No? I have attended some seminars on advanced uh, transfer pricing conducted by OECD. No? Tsaka talagang satisfied ako because sa kanila talaga ang nagtatanong. <clears throat> Anong sabi nila? Uh, try to be very careful and review the contracts. Why? Because in related party transactions, there might be a contract, but they are not following the terms and the provisions of the contract. No? Worse, dito sa mga ginagawa kong transfer pricing analysis ngayon, there are contracts, but they lack substance and form. No? Walang substance, walang form. The, the contracts are not signed. Tapos, ano yung case ng Coke? Bakit natalo yung case sa... Uh, um, Coca-Cola versus the IRS. Bakit natalo yung Coke doon? Because when they were required to present their contracts with their subsidiaries, with their related parties, their contracts has no substance. And when the contracts have no substance, they are not enforceable. Halimbawa, walang consideration. Pwede ba yun? Obligations and contract, wala, walang consideration. Ano yung ibabayad ng isa? Anong bridge? It's not enforceable. So, the contract is not enforceable. So, talo ka pagka ganyan ang kontrata mo. No? So, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is the financial and commercial transactions that are substance. And very particular ngayon sa substance ang international communities. Once your transactions has no substance, as if walang transaction. No? Uh, next is the functions, assets, and risks, which is very important when you make comparability. No? Halimbawa, functions, you have to compare independent uh, parties with that of the related parties, which has the same, same function with that of your tested party or with that of your company. No? Kasi pag nakaiba yun ng functions, hindi na yun sila comparable. Hmm? Also, you have to Compare also the assets. Baka yung isa sobrang laki ng assets or asset intensive siya, yung isa hindi. Then they are not also comparable. Or that can be a reason kung bakit there is a difference in price or there is a difference in gross profit. Huh? 
and also the risk no napakahaba po na topic tong uh, risk na to no uh, but this is a very very good topic also in transfer pricing no siguro magkaroon tayo ng ibang uh, topic to discuss really risk but ngayon pinapakita ko lang sa inyo what are the five comparability factors in transfer pricing and number three is the characteristics or nature of uh, property or services no kasi yung characteristics ito naman influence the price that's why if you are using the transfer pricing method na uh, comparable and control price method characteristics of the property or services is very important because a certain deviation on the characteristics of property will also distort the price or change the price no uh, number four is the economic circumstances. That's why a, a good transfer pricing team has an economist. Why? Because yung mga economic circumstances, economic conditions, economic reasons, those are also reasons that the independent party at saka the related party has a difference in price. No? And that will uh, explain the differences in price when you compare independent parties and related parties. How about business strategies? Uh, entities or businesses adopted different kind of strategies in order to thrive in business. No, kasi nga sabi nga natin, there are economic entities and the uh, uh, purpose is to have profit. No, so gagawa ka ng iba't ibang klase na strategies just to have profits or to just to have a uh, uh, very successful business. No? So, iba-ibang strategies yan. And sometimes, that strategies na ginagawa mo will also define the difference in pricing. Halimbawa, yung sinasabi natin na predatory pricing. Ano yung predatory pricing? Babaan mo yung presyo mo para yung um, mga customer ng competitors mo sa iyo na lahat bibili. So, wala ka ng competitor dahil mababang mababa yung presyo mo sa katataas ng presyo dahil wala ka ng competitors. No? So, you try to eliminate your uh, competitors. Those are predatory pricing na bawal yun. No? And this um, business strategies na to, business restructuring, these are uh, regulated by the Philippine Competition Commission under the Office of the President. No? May mga... Uh, restructuring dyan, may mga changes sa business na kailan they have to seek approval from the Philippine Competition Commission. Hmm? Okay. So, the contractual terms of the transactions. So, what are the contractual terms that you are going to review? Nasa kontrata yan. And uh, see to it that the contract has um, substantial form and substance. Hindi, hindi lang uh, yung laman, pati yung form, ha? Huh? May, may mga requirements yan. Okay. So, uh, functional analysis, there are explanations about the functional analysis and also the analysis of risk in the commercial or financial trans relations. These are very important, no? Reading purposes nyo, just expound your knowledge. And then we have the uh, characteristics of the property or services. Nasabi ko nga sa inyo, characteristics are very important. Why? Because difference in characteristics means difference in prices or uh, difference in product. No? So, hindi mo na sila pwede i-compare. Okay? Economic circumstances, ano yung mga uh, circumstances or conditions na yan? Just like the pandemic, no? There is uh, COVID-19 since last year. So, anong gagawin mo when you make a 2020 transfer pricing analysis? Of course, you have to mention the pandemic and ano yun, how it influenced the business. So, ano yung mga uh, businesses that were, were highly affected by the uh, pandemic? Ito yung mga transportation, hotels, no, restaurant, na close yan. But if you're a pharmaceutical company, hindi ka, hindi ka... Affected, tumaas pa yung, ano mo, yung sales mo. Kasi yung mga tao, very particular. Sa mga alcohol lang, no, nagkakaubusan. Sa mga mask lang, nagkakaubusan. So, pag pharmaceuticals ka, of course, you deal with what is uh, in demand during that time. No? So, pagka pharmaceutical ka, and then net loss ka during the pandemic, then that's a big question mark. Why is it that the other uh, 
businesses in your industry is gaining at ikaw ay losing. No? So, ibig sabihin, hindi totoo yan. Okay, so, those are economic circumstances that should be disclosed in your uh, study and also the business strategies. No? Iba-ibang strategies yan. Sometimes, may mga promo, lowering of prices, yung mga introductory prices, no? yung uh, introductory product, no? uh, losing ang company for the first year. Pero, pagka-continuous na, na losing, that is already a big question mark. Why? Kasi you are... Uh, ano na, you are not doing any business na, no? Siguro kung losing ka for 10 years, for 5 years, baka dapat na business mo is an unstuck non profit, no? Si bakit wala kang profit? Business ka pa rin ng business, no? That is uh, already a big question mark. That's what happened to Glaxo Smith Klein in Canada na very sellable yung product nila na Santa. Isa lang na product yun na comparable and control price method yung ginamit. Why is it na the, the product is so sellable in Canada, pero they are reporting losses for so many years, no? So they were subjected to transfer pricing audit and they will required to pay billions no, of dollars because of that, dahil sa findings. Okay, now let's have the uh, third uh, poll question on the comparability factors used in transfer pricing are letter A, nandiyan na hari? A, useful as guide in comparing the independent party transactions and the related party transactions. B, not conclusive and the analyst can resort to other factors. C, exclusive and should be applied fully in every transfer pricing study. And D, used in analyzing transactions with transfer pricing issues. So, yun po yung comparability factors. No? So, you choose A, B, C, or D. Now, let's go to transfer pricing documentation. No? These are on, on, only the basic in transfer pricing. No? And documentation is very important. No? So, for the transfer pricing documentation, these are the uh, three-third transfer pricing documentation required by the OECD. So, we start with the master file. No? So, in the master file, my mga examples, Jan, you uh, try to read that. So, for the... Uh, Description of the MNS business. No, you have to describe. And then the important drivers. Alam nyo dito sa description, these are very specific. So, anong gagawin nyo dito? Dapat uh, alam nyo at saka... Um, uh, since this is a documentation, hindi naman pwede na gawa lang kayo ng gawa ng kung ano-ano dito. No? It should be na uh, with documents. No? So, yung mga description mo dito, same with your is easy, same with your uh, permits. No? Ano? Na didistract ako. Na duduling ako sa ginagawa mo. No? Okay. So, for this um, master file, no? tingnan ninyo dyan kung ano yung mga contents ng master file. And then, uh, very important the MN is intangibles, no? Kasi kasama yan sa ating uh, documentation. So, yung documentation natin is uh, for the intangibles, no? So, we'll have uh, yung, uh, para sa akin na, the two hours is not uh, enough for intangibles. So, siguro, i part one, part two natin yung intangibles, no? Uh, MN is intercompany financial activities. Ito yung sa mga financial transactions between uh, related parties. No? Which you should also document. No? Uh, m is financial and tax positions. Uh, the, yun ang kasama sa master file. Now we have the local file. So ano naman yung uh, content ng local file? Description of the management structure of the local entity. No? So, yun yung mga examples for the local file. And also, the control transactions. No? Description of the material control transactions, procurement. No? So, kung ano yung uh, country uh, transactions nyo dito, nandyan yan sa local files. No? And, at saka ang haba niyan, ang dami. Also, kasama din yung financial information. And the most and very important is the country-by-country country report, which hindi lang to available sa isang country, but between countries, no? So, this country-by-country country report, may, may matrix po to or may model, no? Uh, 
So we have the model template for the country by country report. And uh, we have the overview of allocation of income, taxes, and business activities by that jurisdiction. Dito sa three third uh, documentation requirement of the OECD, which is the master file, local file, and the country by country report. If you have this documentation, pagdating na po sa uh, um, transfer pricing analysis, hindi na tayo masyado mahirapan because the, all the information na kailangan mo, nandito na. No? So, gagawan mo na lang ng format. Okay. So, ano po itong uh, template dito sa country by country report? We, you have to disclose the uh, name of the MNE group, the fiscal year concern, the currency used, and then the tax jurisdiction, the revenues between unrelated party and the related party, and then the total. No? Then you have the profit or loss before income tax, income tax paid, income tax accrued, stated capital, accumulated earnings, number of employees, tangible assets. Alam nyo, kung analyst ka, by just looking at the data here, no? may big picture ka na of the company. No? And then we have table 2, list of all the constituent entities. Ano ito mga constituents? These are companies which are member of the group. No? Constituent entities of the NME groups included in its aggregation per tax jurisdiction. So, as opposed to the segmented financial statements, this is consolidated. No? So, pero sabi ko, since the uh, RAMO 1 2019, there are information there that the examiner may require you to submit a segmented financial statements or financial report. So be very, uh, keep also um, record on your segmented financial information. No? Para pagka ni-require sa atin, nandyan na may ibibigay tayo. So on this um, uh, table to list of constituent entities, no? sa aggregation ito per tax jurisdiction, so aggregate total. No? So you have the tax jurisdiction, constituent of entities resident in the tax jurisdiction, tax jurisdiction of organization or incorporation if different from tax jurisdiction. Kaya very helpful po ito sa, uh, sa uh, mga uh, transfer pricing officer kasi nandiyan na lahat ng kailangan mo. Please specify if the nature of the activity of the constituent entity in the additional information section. And then we have the uh, additional information is a type. Explain mo lang. Then we have the template for the country by country report. No? And then my general instructions. And who are the constituent entity. And then meron po tayong isang topic on uh, transfer pricing. The transfer pricing and permanent establishment. Para sa akin na, it's very timely that we have to discuss permanent establishments because Para sa mga ordinary or sa mga common na mga practitioners natin, hindi natin alam what is permanent establishments. May mga technicalities pala to, no? I just understand uh, fully kung anong ibig sabihin ng permanent establishments and kailan you can, you can uh, consider an entity, a permanent establishment in a country. Ngayon lang, nung kumuha ko ng uh, advanced uh, program in... Uh, international taxation no doon fully siya na na uh, explain so i, i share ko po sa inyo yun no and how much is the fee no tuition fee for that uh, 6 month uh, certificate program international taxation that is 100,000 webinar lang no lahat ng mga materials mo soft copy lang no but that is 100,000 but of course kailan mo gastusan ba bakit you have to invest also in knowledge no Kasi ano tayo eh, knowledge yung ating binibenta. So, so you have to uh, spend or invest in knowledge. No? So consolidated financial statements, these are required. No? Uh, may mga uh, free webinar tayo on tax preparer na mayroon tayong how to make these consolidated financial statements. And in making consolidated financial statements, we have to follow the accounting standards. So, period covered by the annual template. No? So, uh, usually 12 months. Parang sa Pilipinas din, uh, ano tayo dito, our one taxable period for income tax purposes is 12 months. Why? Because transfer pricing is only for income tax. So, source of data. Yung source of data natin, 
So, kung saan tayo available, saan ba available yung data natin when we make transfer pricing analysis and documentation? So, from the government agencies, no? Or, nung sabi ko sa inyo, you can make use also of the commercial databases which are very expensive. Okay. Template for the country-by-country country report, there are specific instructions, no? For your guide. And we have revenues, no, uh, basahin ninyo yan, the profit and loss before income tax. May mga explanations on uh, what are the contents and what are the, uh, what are the inclusion when you make this uh, report, no? Limbawa na lang, yung tangible assets and other than cost equivalents, no? So, nakalagay dyan yung mga instructions. And the uh, list of the constituent entities, no, nandyan yan, mga instructions na dyan. So, uh, try to follow the uh, instructions given. No? For the business activities, the example, we have research and development. These are examples, ah, holding or managing intellectual property. Ito yung mga IP company which are very, very, uh, kung baga sa ano na uuso ngayon, no? Parang ang daming na... na uh, labasan ng mga IP company. No? Why? Kasi doon mo na lahat ibabayad yung royalty sa kanila. And then we have purchasing or procurement. No? These are example also of business activities. Manufacturing or production, sales, marketing, distribution, administrative, management, support, services, provision of service to unrelated parties, internal growth finance, regulated financial services, insurance, holding shares, or other equity instruments, or pwede rin siyang dormant. Ano ibig sabihin ng pag-dormant yung business activities mo? You have no business activities. And then others, no? So, these are the uh, documentation requirements, which we have also another seminar for the documentation requirements. We will tackle the documentation requirements under RAMO 1, 2019. We will also tackle do documentation requirements under RR 2, 2013. And also the BIR form 1709 under uh, different uh, revenue regulations which are attachment to your income tax return. No? So, hindi natin pwedeng i-discuss dito yan because we have a very limited hour. Now, let's go to the fifth uh, poll question. No? Number four, the documentation of transfer pricing policies in dealing with the financial and commercial transactions of an enterprise is one of the most difficult tasks in transfer pricing. That is letter A. Letter B, a K factor in resolving transfer pricing disputes. No, yung documentation daw, K factor in resolving transfer pricing disputes. And letter C, the most important functions of management with related party transactions. Yun daw yung documentation. And the documentation that is helpful during the transfer pricing audit conducted by the tax authority. No? Answer, lahat dyan, very, very important. No? So, uh, Harry, bigay mo sa kanila yung ating evaluation. No? So, sabi ko sa inyo, we have a very limited time. We have to observe our uh, time. No? So, our... Uh, Topics are overviews. Please expound your knowledge. We have given you your uh, PowerPoint, no, your materials. Please try to read that. And then, kung ano yung hindi nyo maintindihan, try to expound that. Use the internet. No? So, for the evaluation form, nandiyan na? Okay, so, the, the, please fill up. And then, paano yan? I-submit nila. No? Okay. Sige. Uh, I, I will give you mga two minutes to answer and then we'll proceed with the question and answer. Marami na? Okay lang. Sige. Please uh, answer the evaluation form and then question and answer. You, you are still invited ha, sa mga iba pang seminars natin sa transfer pricing during June. Uh, ano lang, medyo tiyaga-tiyaga lang po, but uh, I'm sure, uh, ano kayo, benefited talaga kayo when it comes to transfer pricing kasi yung materials din na binibigay namin sa inyo are updated.
benefited talaga kayo when it comes to transfer pricing kasi yung materials din na binibigay namin sa inyo are updated. Ato meron na. Sa iba naman, sa yung unang poll question, 65 yung sumagot. Yung pangalawa, 63. Pangatlo, 53. Yung pang-apat ng 31 pa lang. Ang valuation po ng wala pa baka sumasagot pa. Okay. We can we can proceed with the uh, question and answer no while you are doing your uh, answering your poll question and you are doing your evaluation no. So we can proceed with the uh, uh, question and answer. So sige, first question Hari. First question po, ma'am, galing kay uh, Manuel De La Cruz. Okay. Uh, ma'am Elsa, what is the acceptable profit margin in transfer pricing in cost plus method? Acceptable? Depende po yan sa range, no? So, when you make a um, uh, study, you have to choose your independent company. So, ito yung sekreto na lang ha. Sekreto to pag gumawa na kayo ng actual. Kasi, pag acceptable range mo, sinabi ng OECD, the acceptable range, halimbawa, ito yung range ng uh, ginawa mo na ha, uh, from 0 to 100, the acceptable range is between 25 to 75 range. Pero pagdating na sa actual study, depende din yan. That's why ang, ang, what I'm using is pagka uh, Uh, meron ako mga comparables no? You start with Yung iba ha, from 200 comparables But that is very costly So you start with the 200 comparables And then gawan mo lahat yan ng matrix Ng study no? Kasi kung halimbawa uh, Gross profit yung gagamitin mo So lahat ng gross profit meron ka na idea May matrix kasi kami na ginagawa Na nandudo na lahat ng information About the company So pick up ka lang ng pick up ng uh, Information na kailangan mo no? Para summary siya So, doon ka na mag-start ng point of elimination mo. Those uh, gross profit na medyo masyadong malayo doon sa uh, company mo, huwag mo na siyang isama. Why? Kasi ang mangyayari doon, hindi na magiging acceptable yung company mo. So, you eliminate. Yung sobrang halimbawa, yung gross profit rate ng company mo is uh, 10%. So, ano yung mga acceptable mo doon? So, yung mga... 7%, 8%, 9%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 13%, acceptable pa yan. Pero yung mga gross profit na 50%, 30%, o kaya yung 0% mga net loss, hindi na yun acceptable. No? So, yung sinasabi mo na acceptable, depende yan sa, sa tested party mo, depende yan sa company mo na understudy. Sige. But sabi ng OECD, when you have the range already, 25% to 75% is already acceptable. Take. Next. Next, ma'am, ma galing kay Mary Jane Doroy. Okay. Ma'am, paano po i-compute ang net cost plus margin? Net cost plus margin? Apo. Net cost, depende yan sa transfer pricing policies nyo, No? Halimbawa, net cost, sa kagaya sa ginagawa ng mga uh, BPOs dito sa Pilipinas, they have the reimbursable cost, the actual cost uh, incurred by the companies, and then meron na silang agreed na markup. No? And usually, the markup is 3%, 5%, 7%, or 10%. Which is ngayon, nagbago na sila ng transfer pricing policies nila, increase na nila into 20% and 30%. Sa leasing company nga, as much as Hari, di ba, yung huli natin, maabot na ng 90% yung gross profit nila sa 70%. No? So, matataas sa, sa leasing. Why? Kasi, ano yan eh, uh, passive income. No? So, wala yung masyadong cost. That's why mataas yung gross profit. Okay. Depende sa industry. No? So, when, when you make uh, transfer pricing analysis talaga, depende sa industry. Okay. Apo. Next, ma'am, galing kay SP Salom. Okay. Uh, ma'am Elsa, applicable po ba sa company namin? Uh, consultancy services po, government project po, lahat ang project. Hmm. Yes. 
Yes po. Lalo na, ang client nyo lang naman ang government, but you are private. So you are also subject to transfer pricing audit, especially if kung may mga related parties kayo. And what do you mean by related parties? Ito yung uh, group of companies na you have transactions with. Or ito yung mga shareholders ninyo also owned other companies that have uh, transactions with your company. So applicable po ang transfer pricing. Pero isa lang yung company nyo, wala siyang group of companies, wala siyang transactions with related parties, then yun yung sabi ko sa kanina sa inyo that the arms and principle applies only when there are related parties. Because without related parties, then there is no transfer pricing. So, kung nag-iisa lang kayo, wala kayong group of companies, hindi applicable po sa inyo ang transfer pricing. Okay. Next, ma'am. Uh, galing, galing po ulit kay Manuel de la Cruz. Okay. Uh, ma'am, kindly guide us on the revenue regulations that governs the transfer pricing including IRR. Mahaba po yan, ha? pero try natin. Although, uh, meron tayong um, parang transfer pricing and uh, documentation natin, especially as a documentation, kasi meron tayong local legislation on uh, transfer pricing documentation. So, doon natin yan. Itong, itong June din yan, ha, Aria? Pinadahan mo ba sila lahat ng invitation? Ah, meron din. Uh, so, tingnan ninyo dyan on uh, documentation because we will discuss there the RR2-2013, which is the Transfer Pricing Guidelines of the Philippines na effective siya noong January 2013. And also, we have the RAMO-1-2019, uh, which is the uh, Transfer Pricing Audit Guidelines on the Philippines. No? And then, ito yung mga RR-34-2020, no, at saka yung BAR Form 1709 na mga requirements natin, at saka yung mga RMC, the, the, yung clarification on the uh, BAR Form 1709, we will discuss them all, no? Sa ano na yan, yung transfer pricing documentation. That is also two hours. Okay. Sige, next. Apo, next po ma'am, galing kay... Uh, Ma'am Julian Principe. Okay. Uh, so, ma'am, kapag nag-promo na ni-register sa DTI po per year, dapat naka-disclose naka din po? Yes. Yes po. Yes po. Naka-disclose lahat yan. Sa, ano, alam nyo, ang transfer pricing is transparency. No? Sa transfer pricing, if you have some information which are concealed or they are not uh, uh, disclosed, no? posible matatalo kayo. No? Kasi parang kinonsil mo yung information. That's why, anong dapat? And in fact, the hour is easy, is very much particular on the disclosure requirements. No? Ang dami disclosure requirements na is easy, which are uh, inherent for the corporations. No? So, kailangan yan. And, and even the arms and principle, ano sabi nila, the transactions should be arms length. So, ngayon, may, may idea na kayo on ano yung mga requirements ng is easy na sinasabi niya doon na uh, the transactions must be arm's length, no? So, anong sabi ng is easy? Pag uh, arm's length yung transactions, it is comparable to independent transactions. The related party transactions should be comparable to independent transactions. Yun ang arm's length. Okay. Next. Galing po kay Carlo Magno. Okay. Sabi niya, sabi niya ma'am, uh, G, GN implemented global tax of 15%. <laughs> what is the effect of that? Yes. Yun na yung future ng taxation natin. Ha? Meron na tayong global tax na darating. Ano yung effect niyan? More, um, siguro more on tax administration. Ha? At saka may threshold naman yan. For, for the first implementation, siguro medyo mahirap. But later on, may threshold naman yan kung sino. At saka, para sa akin, I don't know, kasi one, one community na lang tayo eh. That's why there is already a global taxation. And we must prepare for it, no? Must be ready with it. And in, there are jurisdictions that are already uh, training their transfer pricing officers without borders, no? Ito yung mga tax officers nila without borders. So, meaning... Their, their tax officers can examine anywhere in the world. No? Yun na yung ano natin eh. That's why 
Sabi ko nga sa inyo, I'm uh, preparing new PowerPoints. Hindi ko na ginagamit yung mga lumang modules natin. Why? Because they, they are not uh, parang acceptable ngayon. Eh. Kasi sa dami ng bago, just like yung ating for tax agent, may mga create loan na natin, yung mga expansion ng mga benefits, yun na yung mga dapat natin diniscuss doon. Kasi yung iba, hindi na siya masyadong uh, beneficial sa taxpayer. No? Kasi yun naman yung ina-after natin dyan, eh, yung tinuturo natin should be beneficial to the taxpayer. No? Yung napapakinabangan nila. Kasi ang dami sa IRR ng create loan, mahaba yun. Na? Uh, although hindi pa tapos, that's why hindi pa natin din discuss because th that those are subject to change pa. Pero pa natapos yun, we will discuss that, especially yung mga registration requirements at saka yung mga expansion of uh, activities and then yung mga uh, procurement na machineries na nag-a-avail din ng uh, exemptions or benefits. No? Ang dami. Ang dami doon sa IRR ng Create Law. Okay. Ma'am, galing pa rin sa kanya, ma'am, kay Sir Carlo. Okay. Uh, Amazon company have almost zero tax <laughs> payment. Yes. Any idea about their taxation scheme? Uh, tingnan nyo, ha, meron tayo sa basic, uh, sa ano natin, sa tax training, meron tayo dyan na Amazon.com, uh, no? uh, yung Amazon case, no? uh, nakalagay dyan, we explain that. Pero, Uh, anong, anong ginawa ng Amazon? Ang case dyan is about the valuation of their intangibles na uh, tinransfer nila sa Luxembourg. No? Pero ano yung ginagawa nila na 0% uh, or they are not paying any um, tax? Usually naman, lakihan mo yung uh, purchases mo. No? So, pagbalaki, kaya nga ang Uh, uh, transfer pricing law natin, yung section 15 natin, di ba? Allocation of income and deductions. No? Anong mangyayari? Lakihan mo yung deductions, wala kang income. Liitan mo yung uh, income, lakihan mo yung deductions, wala ka pa rin income. No? So, those are the schemes. Saan ba sila doon? Pwedeng both. No? Lakihan mo lang yung expenses mo, wala ka ng income, so zero ka. No? So, any idea about that? At saka they also make Uh, IP company, no? isa yan na uh, maliit na lang yung kanilang babayaran. Why? Because they will pay royalty expense to a, an IP company. Ano yung IP company? Ito yung nag-own sa kanila ng pangalan na Amazon.com. So, they will pay a very high IP company uh, royalty for the use of the Amazon name. And then, ibabaya nila yun sa another related party situated in a tax haven country is paying a very low income tax. So, ano yun? Benefited sila dun sa deductions. No? Wala na wala sa kanila kasi yung income na dinidak nila, yung expenses na dinidak nila, binayad din nila sa another related party. No? So, th those are one of the scheme lang yan ha, by establishing an IP company. And of course, din yung transfer price. No? Artificial price management. Lakihan mo yung purchases mo. Wala ng income. Next. Next, ma'am. Uh, transfer pricing made by ABS-CBN. <laughs> Is it legal or illegal? <laughs> But ako natatawa, no? Because I'm happy about the case of the ABS-CBN. Ako alam nyo, ay 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 ayoko kasing ngingi alam kasi sabihin nila, ay, naku, nagmamarunong. Ayoko ng mga salita kasi na ganun eh. I, I prefer to be quiet, although I have so many offers sa akin. No? Pero, bakit ako happy about the case of the ABS-CBN? Kasi yung dating mga tao na hindi pinapansin ang transfer pricing, ngayon, pinapansin na. No? As to the case of transfer price, uh, ABS-CBN, I refuse to comment because uh, taxpayer ko yan sila eh. No? Taxpayer ko yan sila. And then, na, na, while I was still in the BIR, talagang na ano ko yan sila, na examine. No? Sobrang dami ng transfer pricing issues dyan. No? Kahit na ipa-audit yan sila, napakaraming transfer pricing issues. And I hope so na na-resolve naman no? during the Senate inquiries. Okay, next. Next, ma'am, galing kay Carlo. 
Okay. Company A and Company B are sister companies. Okay, so related in, parties. Okay. Apo, sister companies engage in similar retail business. Mm. Apo, company B ran out of inventory for sale. Okay. What is the acceptable transfer price if Company B decides to buy inventory from Company A? Yung acceptable na price nila. So, dapat si A or si B, kung sino man yun, yung bumili, dapat may, uh, the price of the inventory should contain the gross profit or the markup which is acceptable sa independent parties. So, halimbawa, anong klaseng product yan? You have to consult the independent parties. At paano nyo malalaman yung sino yung independent parties nyo? Usually, your independent parties are your competitors. No? Kaya nga, pag gumagawa tayo ng transfer pricing analysis, I ask uh, the, the companies, the client, sino yung gusto nyo magiging uh, comparables? Ang binibigay nila, their competitors. Why? Because they know the price. Paris, pareho sila ng presyo. So, para maging acceptable yan, sabi na nga natin, you compare the related party prices with that of the independent party prices. Kasi comparable and control price ang gamitin mo dyan. Kasi pricing yung tinatanong mo. So, price. Ano yun? Yung acceptable na price ng independent parties. So, ano yun? It contains markup. So, hindi pwede yun na since related parties kayo, i-transfer mo yung inventory at cost. No way. Hindi yan uh, arm's length. To be arm's length, kung ano yung markup ng independent parties should also be the markup ng related parties. And that is acceptable. Next po, ma'am. Okay. Apo, galing po kay John Andre Pelayo. Okay. Is intra-group transactions covered by transfer pricing? Yes. Yes. Very much, no? Kaso lang, dito pa lang muna tayo sa basic eh, pero... I-offer din natin yan, but later, hindi, hindi kakayanin itong uh, June. Pero intra-group services has uh, so many transfer pricing issues also, especially the pricing uh, ng intra-group services. Karamihan dyan, ng dami. No? Kaya nga intra-group services yun eh. Yung charge mo with the related parties, ito lang. Pero yung charges ng uh, independent parties, ito, napalaki ng disparity. So ano yun? Uh, the transfer pricing uh, auditor will make an adjustment. Ano yun? I-adjust niya yung pricing ninyo, dagdagan niya with that of the independent parties. And then you have the deficiency, deficiency income. Bayaran mo yun. Karugtong ma'am nung tanong niya, uh, is, is transfer pricing applicable only to transactions of domestic companies no. with foreign companies? No. Even na uh, tingnan mo yung revenue regulations 2 2013 transfer pricing is applicable also to domestic companies no kasi sabi ng iba ah transfer pricing is applicable only with uh, cross border transactions or companies in the domestic and with the international companies no pwede rin siya na domestic there are also transfer pricing uh, issues with domestic companies no Kagaya ng intergroup services, pwede yan. Mabaluation na intangibles, pwede yan. Domestic. Nasa RR 2, 2013 po yan. Okay. Karagtong pa rin ma'am, sabi niya po, uh, how about domestic to domestic companies? Yes, meron po. Domestic to domestic companies, more so. Kaya nga ako ngayon, uh, since ayokong kumuha ng mga uh, cross-border transactions na malaki yung scope, Halos ang kinukuha ko domestic companies, no? Kasi uh, limited lang ako sa comparables na domestic din, no? So saan lang ako kumukuha ng ano ko, ng comparables ko sa SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. Kaya nga yung scope ko is uh, maliit lang. No? Why? Kasi pag ang scope ng transfer pricing study mo is Asia Pacific, millions na po ang bayad diyan. Why? Because you have to buy uh, information from commercial databases and it will cost you also millions of pesos or dollars. No? Kaya usually yung ginagawa ko domestic lang. And ano, magkano yung charges ko? 150,000. Okay? Uh, galing po kay Ma'am Marilyn Seredon. Okay, Apo. si Ma'am Marilyn. <laughs> Ma'am, sa hardware, need po ba ang transfer pricing or, or sa SME, mga SMEs? 
Pwede rin, kahit SME, no? meron din transfer pricing issues. Pero sabi ko nga, kung may related parties or group of companies, kasi kung nag-iisa ka lang, wala pong transfer pricing dyan. Pero kung uh, marami na kayong group of companies, iisa lang yung owner, yung pricing of goods and services nyo between you, yun po ang cover ng transfer pricing. Uh, karugtong ma'am, sabi niya ma'am, kung need pa gumawa ng sariling principles before transfer pricing o yung mismong OECD ang maging guidelines? Uh, generally accepted or internationally accepted po yung OECD transfer pricing guidelines ang arm's length principle po. So, doon na po tayo, we adhere to that principle. Hindi na po kailangan na gumawa ka pa ng sarili mong principle. No? Although, during the transfer pricing audit, Pwede mong sabihin sa kanila that the arms and principle is uh, uh, ano na, yung being observed or depende kasi yan kung anong sitwasyon meron ka which you can explain to the tax officers. Apo, next ma'am, galing kay Ma'am Rosalina. Okay. Uh, transfer pricing applicable po ba ito sa small business? Yes. Yes. Kasi kahit na small business siya, Kung mayroon naman siyang related parties na uh, marami o kaya iba-ibang uh, companies, pwede pa rin po. At saka hindi ha, sa, sa, sa experience ko while I'm still in the Bay Area, there are, there are companies na yung classification nila small, pero sa actual hindi naman sila small. No? Depende kasi yan. Next. Sabi nga niya ma'am, small business po pero may... Related company or branch? Ayun. Ano siya? Subject din po, transfer pricing. Kasi disclose mo lahat yan eh, whether big or small companies, basta related parties. Pagdating sa transfer pricing documentation, you have to disclose them all. Next. Next ma'am, galing kay Ma'am Teresa. Okay. What will be po yung best method for consultancy services that solely assist Parent company based in Cayman. Profit split po. Profit split, no other. Why? Kasi service company ka lang, you are doing business to your parent company. Wala ka sariling income. Yung income nandun sa parent company. Kaya profit split po. Sabi niya ma, medyo mahirap po kasi i-compare with FS of other firms. MC firms. Yes, profit split po. Kasi pagka profit split method yung ginamit mo, wala nang comparables. No? It, it doesn't use comparables. Ang comparables mo lang dyan, how the independent companies also split their profit. Pero yung comparables as to commercial and financial transactions nila na uh, how they do their, their business, hindi mo na kailangan. Next. Apo, galing po ulit kay Ma'am Marilyn Ceredon. Uh, 25 to 75% markup. Okay. Ano po ibig sabihin po niyan, Ma'am? Yung kanin yung markup iba yun na yung kanina kasi ang tanong is range no ang range is 0 to 100 iyon yung range ng um, uh, price range ng markup ng gross profit no ng gross profit kasi markup yun doon sa resale price at saka sa cost plus method so ano yung acceptable pag uh, sa uh, gumawa ka na ng transfer pricing analysis Pag ang range ng mga comparables mo, 0 to 100, ang acceptable dyan is yung 25% at saka 75%. No? So, ma ano na yan, ma-explain yan ng statistician. No? Eh, yun nga yung sabi ko sa inyo na unique na uh, trabaho ng statistician. Kasi yung statistician, nakakwantify niya yung unquantifiable. No? Okay. Kapag 25 to 30% markup lang, bakit hindi po acceptable? Ah, acceptable din po yan. Within. Kaya sabi natin, 25 to 75. So, kung 25, yung 35, nandudun yan sa loob ng 25 to 75. So, acceptable siya. Apo. Next, ma'am. Galing kay John Andre Pelayo. Okay. Are loans covered by transfer pricing? Yes, financial transactions. No, There are loans. Uh, sa atin nga, yung unang transfer pricing case decided by court, pero talo yung VAR doon, is that uh, 
loan transactions of Phil Invest, no? Na yung related party, the other company, uh, obtain loan from the bank and then pinahiram dun sa related uh, company without any interest, no? Kaso lang, yung presentation lang sa uh, case, yun yung siguro yung kulang. Pero, pero kung yung case na yun, ngayon na, na meron na tayong uh, specific loan transfer pricing at saka guidelines, palagi ko panalo na yun. Uh, how can you compare loan terms? Loan, ter uh, loan terms compared, ang benchmark mo dyan, kasi meron tayong legal rate of interest, our legal rate of interest is that of the central bank, no? Central bank rate. Kung international naman yan, depende. Meron tayong tinatawag na London Interbank Offered Rate. Meron din tayong Japan. Depende kung saan yung uh, financial transactions yun nangyari. Next, ma'am, galing po kay Ma'am Sonia Angeles. Yes, Ma'am Sonia. Very masipag. Okay. Yung pong mga local businesses na may branches, subject din po ba sa transfer pricing? Kung, kung brands po, hindi siya related parties, hindi po siya subject. Why? Kasi yung brands, halimbawa, yung one company has uh, 1,000 branches, consider lang sila na isang company. Yung covered na transfer pricing, kung halimbawa, uh, you are uh, company, no? meron kang 100 branches, tapos meron ka na namang another company, kung... Uh, with uh, 100 branches na naman. So, related parties na sila. Covered na sila ng transfer pricing. Pero kung isang company lang with many branches, hindi siya covered. Pero iba't ibang company with many branches, covered po sila. Kagaya nung uh, pawn shop companies, no? Pare-paro lang siyang pawn shops. At dami-dami branches. But that branches, although operating the same as pawn shop, iba-ibang company. No? Kaya related parties siya. SM. Tingnan mo ha, yung mga SM department stores, bawat department stores yan, iba-ibang company yan. No? But they're using the same name as SM. Kaya may IP company sila. So ano yan? Related parties. No? Meron yan silang uh, transfer pricing analysis report na to show. Ano pala ang purpose ng transfer pricing analysis report? To show that the transactions between those group of companies who are related parties are arm's length. Yan po yung purpose. Apo. Uh, galing po ulit kay Ma'am Teresa. Okay. Apo, nagagawa po kasi kami ng management agreement. Okay. Pero dahil po sa issue ng transfer pricing, <laughs> hindi po kami makapag-decide okay. on the markup rate ng direct cost. Ah, uh, talagang mag-decide na po kayo. Anong gagawin ninyo? Try to make a benchmark. No? Magtanong kayo sa independent parties How much is their uh, markup At yan ang gayahin nyo no? Kasi kung gagawa kayo Ng sarili nyo And then hindi siya arm's length Meaning hindi siya comparable With that of the independent parties With the same activities as you Hindi siya arm's length Kaya magtanong kayo Because nandiyan naman kayo sa, sa ano, Alam nyo ngayon Because of the transfer pricing Kailangan, or it is a must, that you are engaged in a particular industry. Dapat meron ka rin mga records or information about the industry where you are in. No? So, hindi na pwede yung noon ay wala na, yung mga research and development natin, wala na. Kailangan natin ngayon yan. Because that's part of the transfer pricing documentation. Next, ma'am. Subject to tax po ba ang transfer pricing? Yes, income tax po. Yung findings na halimbawa, ah, hindi arms length yung transactions mo. So, the, the examiner ng BAR, i-adjust niya, dagdagan niya yung income mo. So, magkakaroon ka ng deficiency income. At ang tawag doon, adjustment sa transfer price. Apo, next ma'am, galing kay Sir Carlo. Required ba ng BAR ang analysis? Yes po. Tingnan nyo, sa 1709 na form, nakalagay dyan yung transfer pricing documentation. At pag sinabi mo na uh, transfer pricing documentation, transfer pricing analysis report, yun po yung uh, may mga comparables na. No? So, required po yan. At hindi lang yun, during the transfer pricing audit, i-require nila kayo, talaga kayo ng examiner to have a transfer pricing audit report. During the filing of the... Uh, 
return, ang i-require sa inyo is only the 1709 na form, yung disclosures lang. Pero during the audit, i-require po talaga kayo ng transfer pricing analysis report. Yun yung mga may comparables na. At yun yung ginagawa na ng transfer pricing analyst. Okay. Wala ang tanong, madam. Okay, so I would like to say thank you po sa ating mga participants. We still have our uh, webinars, free webinars for this uh, month of June. Please feel free to participate. And we, uh, as long as we can, no, yung makakaya lang, we want to give you a very informative webinars and updated at that. No, So with that, I would like to say thank you. And... Uh, have a nice weekend ahead.